So we're here to talk about the Copeland Community Stroke Prevention Project, which started life um, at a time when there was probably a bit of concern about the future of stroke services. There was going to be a change in the way that they were delivered, which meant when you had the acute phase of your stroke, so when you immediately had it, you had um, treatment at um, one of our district general hospitals, not available at both, but it would be 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you would get some really high level um, input medically more quickly. But that threw up an interesting um, concerns for our community around the other district general hospital who thought they might be missing out a bit. But when we, we, we talked about some of the concerns and the challenges, one of the biggest issues that came out was the actual number of people who were having strokes living around Copeland. So some of the wards within Copeland had really, really high numbers. And in bringing people together to discuss it, what was really obvious was that the best type of stroke to have was just not to have one in the first place. And what we really needed to do was focus on some of that stroke prevention work. So we were, we were fortunate in being able to get some support from NHS England. We were part of their Building Health Partnerships programme, which introduced us to Charlotte, who's going to tell you a little bit more about it. So we kind of started out with the plan of let's let's bring some people together um, in a in a local local venue in Egremont in the west of Cumbria and hear what's on people's minds about this uh, hear what people are most worried about and that was a real mixture of local residents and professionals from the NHS and from other other organizations that we were working with like the community pharmacy like Northwest Ambulance Service like the NHS like public health um, as well as some of the other the other groups, the more locally based and community groups, um, so that there was a place where people could raise their concerns, but also a place where we could look at what do we do to make a difference here. So we were building the ideas all the time and gathering in particular ideas from the community about really good places to go where we could um, undertake uh, community blood pressure and atrial fibrillation testing in the community. So the spaces and places where we could do that. And the principle that guided us all the way through what we did was if you want to do prevention work, if you want to avoid people having a stroke, you can't expect them to come through the front door of the NHS there isn't the capacity for GPs to be able to do that within their days anyway. What you need to do is to go where people are and have conversations with them and offer them health checks. Um, doing those health checks in a way which then doesn't create a huge amount of work for, for primary care. When we got to the stage of um, deciding what events we would like to attend uh, and um, take the stroke awareness message uh, out into the community, we were quite straightforward uh, to set them up uh, in the traders markets in Whitehaven uh, and at um, the Dissington uh, tractor event and um, as ever with these events um, they take a, a fair bit of organizing but when you galvanize a community group um, everything comes together uh, and that's what happened. We saw a reasonable number of people, a large number of people at both events and as ever eight to ten percent of them actually were referred for further assessment once they'd had their blood pressure test or AV test undertaken on the day. Many people were given advice and support uh, and just a gentle chat uh, quite often is, is all that's needed to encourage people to actually think about what they do on, their, on a day-to-day -day basis in their lives to help their own health and well-being. After we just got up and going and doing face-to-face -face, um, meetings with a uh, couple of meetings with, with people in the area, COVID struck and everything stopped. However, fortunately, by this time, we had a, a pull-up banner and um, the little leaflet. So I was able to take that down to some of the supermarkets and have it there near the entrance, near the exit as well, um, for people to actually take note of. And... Um, the leaflets are always, always being picked up by folk. So for very, very, very many months, that was the main way that we contacted um, the outside world until we got our uh, website um, up and going. So at least during this time when we've not been able to meet face to face, we've been able to have um, contact with the community, which has been a particularly useful. And what we're looking forward to now is really building on those strengths um, we've had a lot of time to reflect about what we want to do here. So getting out back out to those events feels really important as our next step.
there's lots of pressure, quite rightly, um, within our health systems now to look at managing some of that prevention, look at population health management, look at how we reach people before they become really ill. And we can't do any of that sitting behind a desk, behind a door that's got NHS written on it. It's got to be going out into the community and doing things, trusting people to have a go, trusting people to have those conversations. Way back in 2016 and 2017, I got involved in uh, arranging a number of uh, rather large scale um, community health events. It was somewhat difficult, I have to say, to, to actually try and engage with the appropriate parts of the NHS uh, and public health system to, to actually make it work as well as we would like. We got there, but it was hard work. Um, and I think by engaging early with the system, as we have done on this occasion, uh, I think it will make it easier in the future uh, for these sorts of events to um, to take place, particularly as we can actually really show hard evidence that they work. There really has to be some support from the NHS. So it, it can't happen because Kevin's really enthusiastic and he wants to go out and do it. We've got to have some clinical input into that. And I, I think understanding the need for some really good clinical visible leadership is really important to how we're going to be able to really make a difference to the health of our own communities. So I think my big learning for myself, but also big takeaway from all of this, and, and um, we're not done, so um, we, we, we carry on regardless um, of what's happening, I think, and we've, we've managed to show that, is do something. Sometimes we, we try really hard to get, to make plans and get everything right and get all our ducks in a row. And we don't necessarily need to do all of that. Yes, we do need to be safe and we do need to manage risk carefully. And we've learned a lot about that in the pandemic, especially. But I think a lot of the time people get really fed up sitting around discussing the problem and, you know, really want to roll their sleeves up and get on with it and think about what they can do. So I think it's about taking brave steps. They can be really small steps. Look at what you've got, understand what you've got around you, the people, the contacts, the places, the spaces, and go out there and do something. I think we could have gone out there in, in, a, in a different way. We could have um, chatted to people, simply done that. But we had a lot more to offer because of the people that came around us. But, but yeah, do something. Um, it really helps get people on board.